and today's episode, we're pretty much just tinkering around in the yards. We don't have much going on. We might go for a crop tour. You know, I think that's a good idea. It's a cooker in the yard today. My pickup showing 86, um, but it's pretty hot in there when there's no wind. So kind of working on the row cultivators today, getting some hillers put onto them because that's what we're going to put on for our second run. They're basically a little metal flap that helps hill the beans up a little bit higher. So that's what we got going on and we might go for a crop tour later today, check things out, see how they're going. It's dry, we need rain, but things are still alive and we'll get to that when we get to that, I guess. <laughs> Welcome to the Red River Valley of North Dakota. A land flowing with milk and honey. You're watching Beet Farmin' Mitch. And in fact, it's actually so hot out, I didn't really want to drink my coffee this morning. Um, so I left it in my pickup and it's about one o'clock so I figured, hey, I'll take a sip of it. It's still just smoking hot. It's still just cooked. So, you ever want to keep your coffee hot in the summer? I'll just leave her in the pickup and let her cook. So this is the combine that we've been working on. Me and Jason went through this whole thing the last couple of days. It was quite a process. There's lots to do. Grease it, change oil, check all the lights, check the air in the tires, clean the cab out. Uh, we had to fix a couple things on here. We had a belt we had to change. So there's always something. It usually takes a while to get through everything. Um, but you know we keep going and this one doesn't fit in the shop in the winter so that's why we have to do it in the summer which it's not the end of the world we have some 2388s case h2388s and those ones fit in the shop so we're able to get through those this winter um, but right here we got our row cultivator we actually have a second one too so we're working on both of them and these are the hillers it's so normally it's just this sweep here but the hillers is this little thing here, and this piece of metal kind of helps hill it up more. We'll lift the shields up, which actually reminds me we still have to do that. There's the hillers. You put the hiller under here, tighten her back up. pretty good let her dry and put her back on well we put a good day in finishing up combine work and getting the row cultivators ready we're gonna go and check out the wheat sugar beets pinto beans navy beans and swing by some corn and some sunflowers Let's see am i missing anything i think that's everything so let's get to it maybe we should fire off with the old sugar beets and we're zooming and zipping over a field of beets. We got the drone up here. Uh, we're right on a variety change here in this shot. You can see they're a little darker green on the left and a little more lime green on the right. You can see an odd beet missing here and there, but overall, beets look very nice. All right, so here's the sugar beets. I'm actually standing right on a variety change here. Um, this yellower variety is a higher sugar, lower tons variety. This is a higher... Um, tons variety, lower sugar variety. Usually if they're kind of more yellow colored, they'll have higher sugar content. So towards harvest, we actually want them to turn yellow. That doesn't mean they're unhealthy. So we'll start with the higher sugar variety here. 
Got a nice tap root on them. They're coming along, they look pretty good. Here's the higher ton variety. See that one's a little bit greener than that one, but the root size isn't too much different. In fact, it almost looks like the uh, the specific higher sugar variety beet I pulled out might be slightly larger than the other one. And here we got some hard red spring wheat. All right, so you can see an odd plant missing here and there. Um, it's not super thick and lush like it is some years. Uh, the big thing here, um, this field doesn't look half bad. It's not going to be a bumper crop by any means, um, but there are places and different fields that I've seen that are just sticks of wheat, basically, with small heads on them. So this isn't half bad, but it's still not going to be a bumper crop. Here you can see some holes um, just from lack of moisture, but right here it gets a little bit better and this doesn't look half bad in this part now. So again, very field to field dependent on the wheat. So we're out in the wheat here. It's, you know, the wheat is kind of the tough crop of the year. It was just so hot, it was so dry, and the wheat does not like it like that. And so here we got the wheat coming along, and it's actually, it's flowering right now. You can see those white little things on there. Those are actually flowers. Probably don't want to give these to your girlfriend unless you put it in a bouquet, then that might look pretty nice. But so the wheat uh, that we grow is hard red spring wheat and a lot of that gets just milled down into flour, baked into bread. It's usually a higher protein wheat, so it's good for bread flour. And speaking of flour, we got some sunflowers here. And you can see on this particular field, it was very dry planting into. Um, stand isn't the most uniform on this one. There's still some decent plants here though. And so I'm out in the sunflowers here. They're coming along. This field was pretty dry. There wasn't much moisture here. Here's a sunflower plant. You can see there's a lot of vegetation there. And so these guys end up going into oil seed, bird seed, food. Um, the oil seed variety, if you're curious about that, I made a video called The Tale of a Midwestern Sunflower Farmer. So be sure to check that out if you want to learn more about sunflowers. But in short, yep, we grow these. Shake all the dirt off of them. You can see the tap root there. That's what that thick part is. That's called the tap root. Plants either have like a fibrous root system, a tap root system. Sometimes both. This has a lot of fibrous roots, but a tap root, that's kind of the main thing. Like sugar beets. Sugar beets are a tap root. They've got that one big root where like wheat and like grass is just like that fibrous root system, that thatch type deal, you know. So different root systems, different plants. We grow them both. And so here we've got some candy corn. No, just kidding. This is field corn. Uh, this looks really nice in here. And, you know, if I'm going to sum up all the crops this year, it's just so variable. Field by field, which fields had moisture going into the year, which ones got the spotty showers of rain. It's really going to be, you know, up in the air for harvest, and we'll just kind of have to see what happens. But overall, we're going to need to continue to get timely rains. And we've got the corn. What do they say? Knee high by the 4th of July. Um... Well, it is not the 4th of July yet. It's still June, actually. And I'd say it's actually right up to my armpit. The corn looks pretty good out here. It's kind of hit and miss in places this year with the corn. It really just depends on where there's moisture. Um, it, you can see that the corn really has like this pineapple look on it. It's because it was like smoking hot, 90 degrees today. And the corn doesn't like it that hot. I had a friend all about farming. Check him out on Instagram, check him out on YouTube. He uh, was telling me that um, I think 86 degrees, that's when the corn plant kind of shuts off. So when it gets hotter than that, it ain't doing too much good. So this is field corn, basically this goes all over the world. Oh boy, this one is firmly threaded. Um, this goes into animal feed, people feed, fuel, all kinds of different stuff, ethanol, corn syrup, you got tortilla chips, you know, you got all kinds of stuff that this can end up getting made into. So it's a good looking corn plant. Oh, and the crop I forgot to mention the secret crop. We've got soybeans. So 
Seven crops. I listed six, but this is the seventh one I forgot about. So this soybean field was probably our driest field this spring. It was a very difficult field to work with. Unfortunately, you can see the stand is pretty thin on this one, but we are making something work here. Lots of crops. So here we got soybeans. This is also a very versatile plant. Actually, you can see some of the nodes on the root there. Um, Soybeans put a lot of nitrogen into the ground, um, and that is very handy because nitrogen is a good resource to grow crops with. Um, but soybeans also a very versatile plant. Um, we actually solid seeded this field, meaning that we just used like an air seeder. So they planted pretty thick. They're not like in rows like a lot of people do. Really just depends on what you're going for. Um, we decided to go for this. We've done it in rows, 22 inch row spacing as well before. Um, Typically you'll get a little earlier canopy with this, shading out the weeds. This field was very dry. It was um, sugar beet ground. There just wasn't much moisture here. We really needed rain. We got some rain, they're coming along, but it needs more. So soybeans, made into biodiesel, food, soy inks. You know, like if you ever have like Dixie paper plates, soy ink on there so that like it's safer for food consumption instead of like petroleum inks. So fun fact. And these pinto beans are looking absolutely wonderful. They are quite nice. This is about as good as you can ask for. We got good stands, good, nice and thick. We just need to continue to get rain on these, which is, I guess, the story for the crops every year. But this year, especially important because we're just barely hanging on there. Yeah, you can see they're nice and full and thick. We're going to start doing our second round of feet cultivating on these, row cultivating with the hillers on. And here you can see a lovely shot of the countryside. Beautiful. So this is a pinto bean plant here. They're quite a bit larger than the navy bean plants. Um, but you can kind of see the rut system there and the leaves coming through. These guys are really coming along nicely, so can't complain with that. You can see a couple holes right there, but that's because they're right by the ditch. But overall, these look all right. So you can walk out a little bit to see how dry it is down there. See, so yeah, I'm digging down here. It gets hard down here and there is some moisture down there. But usually when it's really blocky and dry down there and you can pull the soil up in chunks, usually means it's pretty dry. So they're hanging in there. They're growing kind of slow. I know a rain would definitely perk them up and make them happy. Ooh. And look at this. The little bean that could still coming and growing. But so our pinto beans, a lot of them actually go to Bush's baked beans, you know, like with the Bush's grilling beans with the golden retriever, a lot of them actually go there. So next time you have some Bush's baked beans, you can look at the ingredients list. It might say prepared white beans. It might say pinto beans. It might say navy beans, depending on the flavor and type you get. Uh, but those are pinto beans and likely that a bunch of those will go into those. And so here we've got the navy beans. So these are another dry edible bean. They are biologically smaller than pinto beans and that the bean that they produce is a small white bean. We're a little disappointed in how small these still are. They seem like they're really taking their time this year, unfortunately, to grow. Usually they're bigger by now. And now for our final crop, we have navy beans. And so these are another dry edible bean like pinto beans, but they're smaller. You can see they're quite a bit smaller actually, even in a similar growth stage, so. Yeah, and so this field's got some volunteer wheat in it, like you can see here. Also has some mustard in it. You can see there's some gaps in the stands here, um, but it really depends. I'm kind of in a spotty part of the field. Uh, but there's some mustard, wild mustard. We've sprayed that um, recently. So the navy beans are kind of looking a little bit smaller than we'd like to see this year, um, mostly due to well, probably lack of moisture. So they're coming along, but they're slowly coming along. So we actually did half rate herbicide. We're gonna do another half rate just cause we don't wanna smoke our navy beans too bad. All right, so I got the whole spread of crops here. So here's the sugar beets. This is the higher sugar one. This is the higher ton one. They look pretty, pretty evenly yoked right now. Um, but yeah, you can see the sugar beet's got that nice taproot 
and they're growing along. And so here we got the wheat. So the wheat's coming along. It, you know, it's very spotty. In places it's good. In places it's not good. In places it's okay. The sunflowers, again, that's pretty hit and miss. Some fields look really nice. Oh, actually, that's part of the sunflower seed there that popped out. We got them. Yeah, there you go. That's pretty neat. Um, these are also a taproot system. You can see that taproot coming down. So these guys can get down there for water too. He's kind of starting to wilt though because he's been cooking in my pickup. Um, but he's coming along. Actually, if you look up close, you can see the head of the sunflower just kind of starting to form in there. It'll grow much taller than what it is, hopefully. Um, so that's what we got going on there. And then we got field corn. This is coming along. This has got some good roots there. This is looking pretty nice. We got a nice large stock of corn. Here we got the humble soybean plant. This is coming along as well. And then we got the three beans here. So we got the soybean, we got the pinto bean, and we got the navy bean. So you can kind of see eye to eye how different they compare. You know, soybeans are kind of a little lankier, pinto beans a little bushier, and then these navy beans are just kind of smaller than the pinto bean in general. There's the spread, all the crops that we grow. Everything's looking green and nice right now and hopefully things can hang in there and keep going to see what kind of crap we got this year. Anyway, thanks for watching. This is Beet Farm and Mitch, and don't forget to keep it sweet.